Perek HaMoycher Es HaPeros Dav Tzadi Zayin Sponsored Lilui Nishmas Ephraim Ben Shchadet Let's review. According to Rava, we established yesterday one who adds three cups of water to lees and decants an additional cup is wine. If only an additional half, the Chachamim of a Brisa hold, it is not wine. The Gemara questions Rava's premise from a Brisa concerning tithing of leaves. Tanakama holds, if one does not decant more than the amount of water he added, he does not tithe the extract, whereas according to Rabbi Yehuda, he does. However, if he decants any more, both agree he tithes the extract. Apparently, any amount more is wine. The Gemara answers the dispute applies even to an additional amount up to a cup more. It was presented where no additional extract was decanted to teach Rabbi Yehuda's stringency that he must tithe it because it appears to be wine. Rabbi Chia Barabin decided that if one added three cups and decanted less than an additional cup, the blessing is shahako. The Gemara brings a brisa that discusses other laws pertaining to a lee extract. Number one, wine from lees, remnants of truma grapes. The Tanakama holds the first and second extracts are truma. The third is not. Rabbi Meir holds any number of extracts are truma as long as the lees impart flavor. Number two, wine from lees remnants of Maishasheni grapes, only the first extract must be drunk in Yushalayim. Rabbi Meir again holds, as long as it imparts flavor, it is Maishasheni wine. The laws of Maishasheni are not as stringent as Truma. If it was the Mai produce purchased from an Amaretz, which is questionably tied, one can consume it locally. Number three, wine leaves from remnants of Hegdish that has Kedusha's Damim, monetary sanctity, items consecrated to Bede Kabayas for temple maintenance, up to the fourth extract is sacred property, according to Rabbi Meir, as long as it imparts flavor. Wine consecrated for libations, having Kedusha's Aguf intrinsic sanctity, no matter how many extracts is prohibited. The Gemara compares the previous distinctions to the laws of Machshirim, making food susceptible to tumor by contact with a liquid. Although both water and wine are liquids that make food susceptible to tumor, wine makes food susceptible even if one had no intention to use it, whereas water does not render one's food susceptible if he had no use for the water. Therefore, if rainwater fell on truma leaves twice, after each rainfall a cow drank the extract, the third extract being water, not wine, would not render the food susceptible to tumma. The Gemara discusses what wine can be used for the mitzvah of Kiddush and which wine cannot be used. Rav's general ruling is to permit for Kiddush wine that can be used for the libations in the temple. It does not exclude, number one, yayin migito, grape juice. If used for a wine libation is acceptable ipso facto, Therefore, can be used for Kiddush, even the Chathila. Number two, wine from the top of the barrel that contains mold, or from the bottom that contains sediment, are acceptable ipso facto. Therefore, can be used for Kiddush, even the Chathila. Number three, black or white wine, sun sweetened grape and raisin wine, are acceptable ipso facto. Therefore, can be used, even the Chathila, for Kiddush. Number four, souring wine is a machlokis. As we learned, Rabbi Yochanan holds the blessing is Bar Priya Gefen and can be used for Kiddush, whereas Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi holds the blessing is Shehako. Rav cannot exclude either opinion. Number five, diluted wine, although not usable for libations, must be used for a kosho bracha, such as Kiddush, for its better taste. Number six, wine left uncovered may contain snake venom and cannot ever be drunk. Number seven, wine from Lees, the Aloha follows the Chachamim, that if one adds three cups of water and decants three and a half, it is not wine for any purpose, not only Kiddush. Therefore, the Gemara concludes, he excluded wine with a bad odor that smells and tastes like wine, but improper to use for libations, or Kiddush, or he excludes filtered uncovered wine as not appropriate for either mitzvah. If you're enjoying Daphne 5, 
please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.